I'm not going to do any close-ups today because, quite honestly, I'm, it restricts what I can do on the uh, the head. I got to constantly be mindful of uh, the position of the uh, clay to the camera, and uh, I just soon not do that today. I want to get these uh, heads done. So I'm not certain I'm going to show this completely today. Anyway, I just uh, trying to get these heads done because it's starting to bore the crap out of me. <laughs> That's a lot of heads. Anyway. <sighs> I've been asked quite often, how did you ever get into sculpting? Well, back in my senior year in high school, I took a ceramics class with Mr. Shaw at uh, Skyline High School in Salt Lake City, or actually South Salt Lake. and. Uh, I couldn't throw pots. That's it was a ceramic class, and the teacher said, "Well, why don't you try sculpting?" So I took uh, some fire clay, some bra uh, brick clay actually, and uh, tried sculpting. I sculpted in wire and coat hanger, and uh, plaster and burlap and all kinds of stuff. And I won three scholarships that year. I was uh, I entered a contest a statewide or countywide contest art contest 
in a school that no longer exists now, uh, Granite High School. And uh, I was offered three scholarships in my sculpting. But two of them, one was to BYU and they didn't teach sculpting, they taught painting. And one was to uh, Utah State University. And again, I think they had a, yeah, I think they did. But I, anyway, it, it, not, not, none of them really offered sculpting. They offered more or less painting. But I, I never thought of myself as a sculptor. And so my grades were too low to uh, get into college. I was a D average. I spent all my time doing artwork instead of studying. <laughs> so the thing that I was being offered, I couldn't take. And uh, so I joined the Navy and uh, this is in 1965. And Vietnam was just well, they just started the draft that year and I didn't want to get drafted into the, the army because I didn't want to be pounding my feet in the rice paddies over there. And I figured if the uh, Vietnamese didn't have a navy. And so I'd probably be pretty safe out on the ocean. Was that a cowardly thing to say, do? Yeah, I probably was. <laughs> but I wanted to continue doing my artwork. Anyway, I joined the Navy and uh, then I found out once I was in the Navy that the, if you got assigned to a river patrol boat over in Vietnam, you could die just as quickly on the Mekong Delta as you could on a ship out in the middle of the ocean, so. Uh, but I never, because I, I was, had a friend who came back from Vietnam who was showing us a film that he shot while on a river patrol boat. And it, he showed a, a guy carrying a bundle of uh, reeds or something on the shore as they were passing by him, and then he drops it and start shooting at him with a uh, big uh, machine gun. And I realized then that you can die just as quickly in the Navy as you can in the, uh, the Army. I was just lucky to be on an aircraft carrier my two years, and then two years in Armed Forces Television down in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. <laughs> I, uh, every hour on the hour, I'd say, you're tuned to AFRTS, Channel 8, Roosevelt Roads, Puerto Rico, the crossroads of the Caribbean. And I used to read news and everything else uh, on the uh, station. It was fun. I had my own dance show, too, for the teenagers of, of the base. It was, I can't remember, Teen Beat, I think it was called. And it was based on American Bandstand. With music and dancing live on camera. It was a lot of fun. But I, I did, didn't get into sculpting again until after I was married and got out of the Navy and I had downtime in the uh, job I had at the printing plant in the uh, makeup department. I made up uh, layouts for books and stuff like that. And there was a lot of downtime, so I brought my clay to my office and worked on some of my first clays in my office there. Sold my first bronze in that office and the guy came in and paid me with one with eighteen one hundred dollar bills and let me tell you back then I was making ten dollars an hour and I'd never seen that much money in one spot so it was a 
thrilled beyond words to sell my first piece, and it gave me the strength to uh, continue doing what I'm doing. That's, and now you know the rest of the story. As this head down for a second and uh, cut this head here off. I don't like that head. So I'm going to cut it off again. Well, I don't need to cut it off. i just take it off. So anyway, I just uh, started sculpting in the basement of, my, basement of my house. I was uh, married at the time living in Sandy, Utah. And uh, that's where I got my start, it was just uh, working with foundries there in the Lehigh Valley and Salt Lake All right, City. that's going to be it for today, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Give me a thumbs up and share my video. And then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right, see you next time.